Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Wendy. And welcome to the Toasted, Toasted Marshmallow, Marshmallow Adventures Podcast. <laughs> Today on the uh, podcast, we have William Strange. Woo! He is a comedian. He's been on Kill Tony, yeah. um, does stand up all over Las Vegas. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I actually uh, just moved out here in October. <laughs> so anyway, welcome. Thank you for being here. We're so glad to meet you. Oh uh, yeah! Thanks for having me on. I loved your minute. Oh yeah, I Kill felt like Tony. <laughs> Tony like roasted you, and I mean, he went at you, and you just handled it. I was like, yeah. we got to follow this guy. Yeah. <laughs> How nerve wracking was that? Uh, uh, not not too nerve wracking. I mean, it's like it's just getting roasted. Like I've done roasts before. You just kind of uh, sit there and take it, and yeah. I figure like. <laughs> It was better for me not to rebuttal since it's Kill Tony's show. Yes. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see people talk back and it's never good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Were you a big fan of the show? Actually, I never saw it. Like, um, I, uh, the first time I ever kind of heard about it was like, uh, was like when I first got out there and started hanging around the comedy store. Yeah. And then I think that was like my third or fourth time signing up and I just went on. So I had no idea what Kill Tony was. Oh, for, uh, wow. Dang. Wow. And so were you living in L.A. at the time? You kind of broke up when you were talking about that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, I originally in 20, January 2020, I moved out to uh, to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and then uh, March the COVID came. So I had to move to Colorado with some family. After I lost my job, and then I was about to actually go back to Los Angeles, but I, my friend headlines the LA Comedy Club in Las Vegas, and I was doing a show in Los. Well, I was doing a show in Mesquite, Nevada, which is outside of Las Vegas. And right before I was about to go back to Los Angeles, he was like, "Don't go back to LA. It's going to be closed for another year." And he helped me get an apartment out here. Oh, and dang. Nice. that's awesome! <laughs> that's great because I remember on that. At that episode you uh mentioned you stayed in the hostel the night before oh yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah that's that's a that was fun i like i rented out an apart i rent there was like the hostel and out back had like the this guest house and i was renting out the guest house with like another two people and it was funny because like it feels like every other week the hostel was raided by the police oh so. really wow <laughs> <laughs> So is that like you see in the movies? It's just a bunch of beds and a room or a house out. What's a hostel like? Because I've never stayed in one. Mm. Well, it's like I mean, like the the place I was staying at was more of a house, like mm -hmm. inside. Okay. Like the front part was like a converted house, oh. and then so you like go in. There was a kitchen, and then like they converted most of the other rooms into like bunk beds and whatnot. Mm. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Because only. Uh, kind of thing I know of hostels is the movie, and you wouldn't want to stay there at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's like it was everyone's super chill there, except for I guess like a few people were doing illegal stuff, but for the yeah. most part, it's just uh, like don't leave your stuff there if you didn't want to get stolen. Like, I had friends yeah. who I kept all my like important stuff with, yeah, so you oh. weren't scared like staying there by yourself. Oh no, uh, it was it was pretty chill. Oh. Yeah. How long did you stay there for? I stayed there up until I had to move back move out to Colorado. Mm. Oh okay. so last March ish. Yeah. 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 God, that sucked. Yeah. So you were just hanging with family during the pandemic? Yeah. My brother like most of my family lives on the East Coast, but my brother lives in Colorado. So like when the when the lockdown finally did happen, he was like you can just stay at my place nice. and my appointment wasn't coming in. So I just ended up going there. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Now I, with the hat off, I see you shaved your head because yeah. your hair was long before, right? Was it? Did you shave your head? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was long before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going bald too. So I shaved mine. So. <laughs> yeah. For the most part, like the only thing that stopped me from shaving my head was laziness. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll just shave my head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. What was it like uh being around Michael Rappaport? 
who has like an opinion on everything. He's a pretty intense yeah, personality. He's super <laughs> charged. It's a, it was actually really funny because I'm actually a fan of Mike Rappaport's. Oh, cool. Like, so it's like Kill Tony. It's like, who the fuck's this guy? Whatever. But and then like Mike Rappaport was one of So I was like, I'm a huge fan of yours. Oh, and like, I didn't awesome. tell him that, of course. But yeah, it was cool being on that episode. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, did you get like when you're being roasted and on the Kill Tony show or just when you're doing roast shows? I mean, do you ever get offended by anything that's said? Mm, not really. No. I mean, like, <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, like, like I started in South Jersey, Atlantic City, and Philadelphia, and they go, and people go pretty yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, especially in like, like I did things like the comedy Johns and stuff. So and more like black rooms and stuff. They'll if you're not doing well, they'll let you know. So it's like one of those things where it's like, eh, sure, wow. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool to get to that place. Yeah, too. Or if you just. I don't know if you have to think of it like as a game or something, you know, just yeah. going back and forth, moving your pieces kind yeah. of. Yeah. It's like, I mean, for the most part, it's like he didn't roast my actual joke. So I was like, that means it must have been pretty well. Most of his roasts were just aimed at me. So I was like, eh, I can take people calling me. Calling yeah, me weird, like, that's true. Yeah. yeah, it was totally about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's what Tony does for the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. He, breaks down to, how like, you look cut you and... to the core. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's cool. we're fan we've seen uh kill tony in person twice mm -hmm. yeah. once in san francisco and once here in uh boise idaho yeah so we were actually at kill tony mania in san francisco yeah that I forget was what awesome. year that was but and we went to la to the comedy store one time and we were like What's this kill tone? Oh, yeah. Like free show. This is stupid. <laughs> Why would it be free? And so we didn't go. Yeah, we never went. So since then, we've paid twice to go in yeah. other cities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't know what it was at the time. So on that show, you taught us about sounding. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, your joke was about finding out what your limit was. Yeah. Your limit was like those zip ties around your balls. <laughs> and needles yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> was that for real you you went through that well there was well what happened was it was like we were going back and forth online it was when i first like kind of started looking at kink stuff and he was like asking my and the guy i was with was asking my limits and i was like i don't have any limits and then he started listing off all these <laughs> and you're like there it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah right so are you uh big in the bdsm community oh i mean i'm big into bdsm yeah. and not really in the i'm not really in the community oh, so gotcha. that's when things get dangerous and whatnot okay yeah. gotcha <laughs> but uh like a cd realm of people or group or well, I mean, yeah, for the most part, like everyone's in the community to some extent. And like a lot of this, a lot, a lot of the times there are people who who aren't, they're usually like the ones who you'll find on like CD sites, like there's a Fetster and like Collar Space and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're usually the people who get more rapey and don't know what they're doing and oh. all that stuff. So, oh, okay. Yeah, you run into a lot of those. Like, uh, <laughs> Like the story didn't tell because he's like, what's the weirdest one you want to talk about? And I chose to go with the sounding one was there actually was someone who finally put uh, sewing pins like up and down the shaft of my penis and stuff. Oh, and, and sewing uh, he, pins. Those are big, right? Yeah. Well, not not like knitting needles, but like sewing pins yeah. are like the ones that are like just little, needles on the yeah. top. Yeah. 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 Those, that seems those good. Guys. Oh, yeah, I guess. Man. I guess we're like putting them into your skin. Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah. But uh, but when you start pulling them out, like just jets of blood start flying everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. How did it feel with them in? You liked yeah. it? It was good? Yeah, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It wasn't like bad, bad. It wasn't like it wasn't terrible. Was it just like, through like the. Was it straight through? Uh, not straight through. It was oh. in enough to have them to have them stand. Oh my god! Was it more like just the skin, or 
Well, to have him stand, that has yeah, to be like good just, enough. Oh, okay. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, just stand on their own. And, you know, I came and then the guy was like, we should take these out before there are complications. And I was like, yeah, I don't want complications. No, yeah. complications yeah. are bad. Oh, <laughs> He took one out and was like, oh, my God. And I was like, what? What? And I looked down and there's just blood flying out. And I was like, yeah, I guess that is bad. Like you're totally good now, though? Everything functions as it should? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything functions as it should. I mean, I've had weird, weird stuff happen. Well, let's hear about it. <laughs> I mean, if you're comfortable. Uh, yeah. I mean, the most recent one, I guess is in las vegas i was i did a favor for a comedian out here and like and he was like listen i can get either give you 20 bucks or i can give you molly and i never had like molly before so he's like listen i'm gonna give you this molly on one condition you take it now because i was about to go up on stage and he's like by the time you get to stage it's gonna kick in oh my so God. i like took the hit of molly and i got up on stage i forget exactly what i said i it's like all I remember from that set is I was like arguing with a lesbian about anal fisting for some reason. <laughs> like she just kept on going anal fisting. I was like, yes, anal fisting. And then she's like, no, anal fisting. I was like, yes, anal fisting. And like, that's all I kind of remember from all that. But <laughs> like we hit a casino and right before I went home, he's like, listen, Bill, before you, um, before the Molly wears off, you need to have sex because it's going to be the best sex of your life. And so I go back to my place and I go on Grinder, but I'm too lazy to like meet up with anyone. So we just start <laughs> Snapchatting and yeah. he, and it was like a kink thing. So he's like, Hey, I want you to, to tie a five pound weight to your balls. And I was like, well, I don't have a five pound weight, but I do have this empty like water jug. So I filled that up, <laughs> tied it to my balls, put it on my bed. He started telling me to do something else. And I forgot the, the jug was on the bed. So I start walking and it falls oh. off the bed and it just pulls me down to the floor. <laughs> oh my God. To call you back. that makes oh, my God. nuts hurt <laughs> <laughs> oh man now was this a gallon water jug yeah it was like a gallon water jug oh because oh, i think a gallon of water actually weighs around seven pounds <laughs> so crap. you went over the five pounds i think <laughs> wow you're you no got an extra two pounds for free. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Jeez. Oh my God. That's awesome. And That's crazy. Right. You didn't so, hurt yourself. Well, I couldn't. It's like I actually texted my friend who does the LA Comedy Club and I was like, hey, I think I need to go to the hospital. It was oh. also three o'clock in the morning. So I just was lying on the floor for a little bit. And then, like, the entire <laughs> next day, I couldn't really walk that well. And then oh. after that, it got better. <laughs> Oh, thank god yeah. <laughs> now when you had these uh pins oh my god. through your junk when you pulled them out and just blood starts gushing out are you freaking out at this point or are you just like yeah it's good we'll put a little bandage on it and keep going i mean we were done like it, it, and that hit, and we were finished so he was taking out the needles and for the most part, I would, he was freaking out. He's like, he was like telling me, don't panic. Everything's going to be fine. And I was like, eh, I mean, if I die, I die. This is like, it's like, you're going to have a fun time explaining this to the police. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you're only what, 30? Are you 30? Uh, 31 now. 31. Oh, wow. Woohoo. Jeez. Yeah. 31. If I die, I die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at this time I was like. At this time, I think I was like 27 ish when I had the with the needle incident. How did you get like that? How did you get that attitude? Because I don't have that. If I die, I die. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have that. <laughs> Where'd you grow up? I grew up in South Jersey in a place called Ocean City. It's like right outside of Atlantic City. Oh, dang. Mm. Is that mm -hmm. a tough area or? Eh, not really. I mean, like Atlantic City is a tougher area, but Ocean City is like a family Christian resort. Oh, dang. Is your family religious? Uh, my father's Irish Roman Catholic and my mom's half Chinese. And she's really into that part of her of her life. But like for the most part, we were Irish Roman Catholic because my dad was. Are you still do you practice? Oh, no. No, I'm done with all that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember from Kill Tony, uh, you saying you did the audio and video for some mega church somewhere. Oh, that's right. Oh, uh, yeah, that was 
and Ocean City is like a family Christian resort. So okay. like one of the big places I had a job was this place called place called the Ocean City Tabernacle. And so I started doing grounds crew work there. And then they're like, oh, you know how to do audio video. And they just start having me do that stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. That's cool. Now, um, I remember you said now you hate them um, on the show. But now, do you do a lot of audio and video production stuff now? Uh, yeah, I do from time to time. One of the biggest things I do right now is I film other comedian sets and and they pay me to send it out to them. So oh. that's a that's kind of a side hustle thing that I'm working on. Nice. So, that's no, smart. If yeah. you're there, what the heck? Yeah, I'm there. And it also gets me favors. Like I've done so many people's things that they're like, yeah, if you need a spot on our show, just let us let us know. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I was looking. Uh, now, do you have I was looking for you on YouTube trying to find some stuff. And I found a William Strange on there uh, with some videos from like five years ago from some birthday party. Is that your page? From some from a birthday party? Yeah. Sure. Oh, is it a comedy birthday thing? Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was. Yeah, that, I guess that is my like. That is my page. Okay. Like, you haven't been there since the birthday, the YouTube page. <laughs> well, I have like, I have like two different YouTube pages. I have some stuff on, and that might, might be the dress pants productions page, if not the. And for the most part, I have some stuff that's like public, not like a ton of ton of stuff. Just because, like, I stuff that I don't use anymore, one offs. Like, I think I have, uh, I think I have some of my sets from from China and Singapore up there, and then like some of the and like some other jokes. And I'm just like, I'm not going to use these anymore. But that might be. I'm not sure if that's on that YouTube page. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't look through all the videos. You went to yet. China and Singapore. Uh, yeah, uh, my first year in comedy. Uh, the guy who does the, the LA Comedy Club, Butch Bradley, had a club in Atlantic City that I did, and he liked me, and I did audio video stuff, and he's like, hey, if you want, uh, he's like, I'm touring through, it was Israel, China, Singapore, and Malaysia. Oh, my he's God. Like, yeah, he's like, you can come, everything will be paid for, you'll get $7,000 at the end of it, oh, and I just wow. opened for him while he was going through, while he did that. Oh, cool. Wow. I'd be like, yes, yeah. like there's no downside. Yeah. All oh my right. God, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So how long have you been doing comedy for? Uh, it's been five years this past April. And what made you decide to get into it? Uh, really, I was uh, at home one night and my friend said, hey, there's an open mic uh, for stand up comedy in Atlantic City. Do you want to go? And I was like, sure. And that's kind of how I got started. <laughs> so did you did go you, up on stage yeah. that first time? Uh, yeah. The first, it's like, he went like the week before, he told me to come out, and then I went up that week and did my own thing. Did you have something prepared or just you winged it? Uh, I mean, I had a little bit prepared. Like, I think the first joke I told was, there's this Hasidic Jew guy that I always used to hang out with, and he and he was like, I don't know if this is just the culture or if he was just a dick, but he like he like he would do things like he'd always hit on women and stuff that weren't he he always made sure they weren't Jewish and he'd like do really like seedy shit. He'd be like, "Hey, will you blow me for a hundred bucks and stuff?" And he would always get into like fights over stuff like that. So I talked about that a little bit. Nice. <laughs> nice. I don't know if that was his culture or if he was just a dick. That's a great yeah. quote. <laughs> yeah, never know these days. I know. <laughs> because, well, because he always made sure they weren't Jewish. He's, it was something about, uh, what is it? Uh, I forget what they call non-Jewish people in Jewish culture. And so, but it was like, uh, they couldn't be Jewish. And they were just like, they, and they, they were like other women. And he would go out and he'd hit on them. Damn. And he'd be a real dick about it. He's like, dude, it's really hard to defend you when you're like, when you go up to someone's girlfriend in front of them and offer like a hundred dollars to get to blow you. Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I have to draw the line somewhere. Dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So is, uh, is comedy like your goal? You want to be uh, an established comedian or you want to be an actor or what's your, what's your goals here? Yeah. For the most part, comedy, comedy is my goal. 
like it'd be fun to write more and stuff like that but uh comedy is really what i what i'm like looking to get into yeah but i guess i did have um i was actually in a movie like my well my friend made a movie over quarantine that mm-hmm. i was in and apparently now he's getting distribution rights on that so i can oh, actually that's awesome I can actually like, hey, I was in a movie. It's like, don't watch yeah. it. It's not that great. Can we but... see it somewhere? <laughs> um, and we, I think he he had it up on Amazon, but he had, I think he had to take it down because of the distribution thing. Okay. But it's called uh, Kings of Rap. Okay. And, uh, and basically, I just play a a conspiracy theorist called Deep State Danny, and I go around and I talk about like different government conspiracies and i have an only fans so at one point like the entire audience just out of nowhere gets to see me like naked ah. <laughs> now is the only fans just in the movie or do you have an actual only fans oh it's just in the movie oh, but okay, gotcha. i should get an only fan you so should, can- dude. <laughs> yeah you totally should you would be a a totally separate genre <laughs> i would yeah. i bet you could make a lot of money honestly <laughs> I I've actually like thought about it. Like, wh- what parts on me could I sell? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think mine will be just uh, close up on my buttholes with, uh, with like, different mustaches like edited over Oh, them. my God. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. A, I'm sure there's a group for that. There is seriously an audience for that. <laughs> yeah. People would pay. <laughs> yeah. You know there is. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like if you had just different types of mustaches, you have a Fu Manchu. <laughs> you know, maybe one day you do a Hitler. Another day you do a. I want to see like a. I don't know any other types of mustaches. Pink. I want a pink mustache. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even do for like my for the people who pay a little bit more have a must have a butthole theater where they're all just a bunch of gentlemen buttholes talking back and forth to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, do great. it yeah. <laughs> oh geez oh my god i think you could become rich doing that <laughs> i'd be able to yeah <laughs> i seriously think that's what Let's people like are looking masterpiece for masterpiece theater yeah. with buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> what if he does yeah oh. what if he's just like a millionaire like a year from now i think he's a like butthole talking theater. butthole with james lipton's voice <laughs> <laughs> Then once a year we do a we do some sort of productions of Roger and Hammerstein's production once a year for the like a hundred dollar subscribers. Yeah, that's yes. awesome. <laughs> Seriously, this might be a million dollar idea. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny, but I I feel like yeah, there's people out there. Yeah, yeah, there's there's an shit. audience somewhere. Oh, definitely. And yeah. you could definitely have an OnlyFans. If you're going to put shit in your junk, yeah, people are down for that. Yeah, I feel so. like, yeah, you could fill a niche or a mm-hmm. niche. Yeah, <laughs> whatever that's called, whatever that's pronounced. Yeah, no, it's like I have a friend who has an OnlyFans, and she always complains. She's like, people, she's like, I'm getting less and less subscribers. And I'm like, dude, all you do is post pictures of yourself in lingerie. It's like you got to It's like that's what everyone's doing. You got to you got to do something. Go against bit. the herd, against the fold if you want to get like yeah. The yeah. Big <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so. Definitely. Plus what did you hear? I just heard recently the Catch Me Outside girl got uh started an only fans like a couple weeks ago and yeah, she's like rich from that. yeah like shut the thing down cuz she has so many mm-hmm. views or pay pays. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd just be nuts and yeah. make a million dollars now. Yeah, she was just this rebellious kid and she's making a living off of it now. Wow. Yeah, it's like, well, she I know the whole Bella Thorne thing where she shut down OnlyFans, but then OnlyFans had to deliver a bunch of uh a bunch of refunds because she promised nudes and then she didn't post nudes and then oh, everyone was like, I hadn't hey. heard that part. I didn't know yeah, she like her deliver. Yeah, that's like the that's why like all the porn performers and stuff got pissed at her because ever since then OnlyFans limited how much you can actually give them. Uh, so like she fucked over so many porn performers and stuff like that. And oh, then her wow. then her whole apology was, Oh, I was doing it to bring uh I was doing it to bring a public face to the porn industry. And all of them were like, No, you weren't, you were just being a fucking like stuck up bitch who wanted some money. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. you were doing it for yourself. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Dang. <laughs> Jeez. So what is your uh, relationship status now? Single, married, boyfriend, girlfriend? Oh, no, I'm single. Oh, single, okay. right, and mingle, that whole fun stuff. <laughs> nice, nice. When was your last relationship? Uh, like relationship, relationship? Yeah. Like... <laughs> your voice got really high. <laughs> yeah, went up a couple <laughs> octaves. <laughs> so you're not down. Are you, you're just, you're not looking for like a long-term thing no not really like like okay. closest thing to a relationship i had in like the last i guess few years was right before i moved out to los angeles and i was like this will just last for a month and then i'm gonna be gone so there was that and it was with someone that was way too young they were like 20 years old living in a dorm room and i was like this is weird as fuck <laughs> like every time <laughs> Like every time I'd leave their dorm room, I'm like, this is fucking weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> but you kept going back. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't anything serious. I was like, eh, some college kid living in a living off of their parents' money in like a dorm in a dorm with a bunch of other kids. It's like this wasn't gonna be serious. And I was looking to leave anyway. So I was like, eh. Hey. Is that what you do though? You you're not, I mean, you're trying to like find people that can't commit kind of you don't want to commit uh, yeah for the most part i guess i'm looking for non-committal stuff yeah because that's weird that's weird like i i dated a dude with a kid once so i was like ew it's like what that's what like he had to actually cancel once because he was like yeah my kid's home sick from school and i was like oh don't don't say you're a father that's weird <laughs> i do understand that yes <laughs> So like, she has no kids. No, I actually have two. Like so, pretty much never wanted them. Never wanted them. <laughs> like, why would I do that to society? Yeah. I don't need to pass this on. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how I feel? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's to each their own and stuff. But it yeah. also didn't help that he was like an old father. Like he was like he was like he was he was like up there in his like mid 50s and his kids were in kindergarten. And my dad's like 60 something. So he was like, so he was right in that ballpark of being almost as old as my dad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That that is like, weird. I was yeah. like, no, this, this is too surreal for me. Yeah. That would be weird. Yeah. I don't think you should be able to be allowed to have kids past your, like, past like 39. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, A lot know. of our friends have kids in their 40s. <laughs> I know. I think by your 40s, you should realize you do not need to have kids. <laughs> Yeah, like it's like, over just fuck. there's too many people yeah as there it is. is like we're done it's good yeah <laughs> i don't know just passed some crazy anti-abortion law <laughs> yeah. we shouldn't get into all that right now but uh let's see um, we're gonna pass a pro-abortion law it's like you're too old for kids we're taking them <laughs> yeah, yes. right. yeah they yes. should yeah you just stick right. a vacuum cleaner up there it's like Shh, okay you're done <laughs> yes. yeah exactly oh okay God. this is a quote from your instagram oh yeah you have Pe some fucking good quotes dude people need to learn more or people need to learn about glory holes <laughs> <laughs> i'm like boom boom boom, boom. elaborate yes <laughs> yeah. yeah i guess that's because like one of my main stories that I'm like, I had like my original like type five and stuff that I used to showcase and opener and stuff was all was that well, it started with that BDSM stuff and it rolls into another BDSM joke. And I've just been tired of doing that. So I have one five minute story that's all just about the first time I ever visited a glory hole. And ah. <laughs> was it in the Minneapolis airport? Oh, no, it was it was in South Jersey. It was at this porn this porn uh, shop called called red barn that was a 20 minute drive away from my house and, and you heard about it prior you obviously somebody was well, like there's a glory hole well like a uh, back in this back in those wild days it was 2009 so craigslist was still up with the with the okay. casual encounters and stuff wow. and if you're ever on gig craigslist they're just pages upon pages dedicated to glory holes no matter where you go they'll be like there was actually there's actually one uh, advertisement for a glory hole that was more in like that was more North Jersey that was way too far to drive. But this guy, 
built a shed in his backyard and he just drilled a hole in it and he's like come by stick your dick and get it sucked and leave Holy like, crap. so if it's not an establishment like, they, they wow. find a way <laughs> one dude <laughs> this, he could just be doing that all day yeah you just gotta get, get yourself a shed we have two sheds <laughs> Well, we could be making way more money. Yeah. You, but you didn't, it's not a pay thing, right? It's free. Well, depending on where you go, like the porn shops, you have to pay to get into the porn booths and oh, stuff okay. like that. But, but like, like his shed, was that free? Yeah, yeah, he's like, send a pic of your dick and then come over. Oh my God. And, so you did? Oh, never. I never did his. Oh. Like, yeah. I did Red Barns. There's another place called the Berlin News Agency that I frequented sometimes. Uh, there was like a rest stop. I forget. I forget exactly where it was. That I went like it. That I went to twice. But yeah, there are like places around you could Were go. Were you ever scared when you? I would think, what if somebody does something mean to my dick on the other side? Well, wait. <laughs> it depends on which side you're on, too. Yeah. I was on the receiving end, so I was the one putting mouse traps on people's dicks. Oh. <laughs> I mean, do you mean literal mouse traps? Well, you see, what I do is I just sit there and start singing, it's a zany action, it's a crazy contraction, the fun is hatching, it's mouse trap, and bam. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. <laughs> I've not been exposed so, to this world. No, before. but you know, our, what was it? Idaho's. What do you oh, that he was the one that got yeah he like got caught in the Larry Minneapolis Craig, airport. I think. Yeah, Larry yeah. Craig. Yeah. He's like, it was a Minneapolis airport bathroom, and they like touch feet, and that's when they know something was something gonna go was down. Going down. Yeah. Yeah. And he totally denied it. He's like, there's not a glory hole in the Minneapolis airport. <laughs> oh, really? So yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know the whole Yeah, it was story. a whole big thing. Wow. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, for the most part, you go in. You put your finger in, someone's like, okay, I'll put my dick in. And then you can have, then hilarious hijinks can ensue. You can, because they don't know what's on the other end. Yeah. So, you, can do you, things so like, you never meet the person. It's always yeah. anonymous. Yeah, it's always anonymous. There's this one gay comedian actually out here in Las Vegas. And he talks about, he told me about how he used to go to glory holes. His name's Ty Rivera. He's like a really funny guy. And he would like uh, go to bathhouses. And he was kicked out because he would put his lighter up to the holes to see who was on the other side. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my God, he was kicked out. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sheesh. Sheesh. And uh, let's see here. I'm just looking at my notes. What? Uh, oh, another quote from your Instagram. I think it was people are something about vegans the, the truth, truth about, about vegans. vegans or something like that oh yeah people another joke and fyi he made me go vegan for like three months and I it did sucked it. and i mostly only ate oreos and something else because you know? they're vegan <laughs> yeah, like, this oh, oh, oreos are vegan i thought that they were made with horse by or like hoof byproducts oh shit well, if they are, then we, we weren't vegan up. for a few months. <laughs> yeah, and we thought we were. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I know Doritos, I know Doritos aren't vegan. Uh, uh, Starburst aren't vegan. Like a surprisingly high amount of things aren't vegan. I was like, oh, these should be vegan. And they're Yeah, totally I thought not. I read that Oreos and Nutter Butters were vegan because but... they have no like actual food in them at all. <laughs> yeah, they're like carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they might, yeah. Oreos might be one of those. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, so that's a, that's actually yeah about another story. Because I had a friend who turned vegan, and she was like kind of, and she was a real dick about it. Yeah. They tend and, to be, and we were. Because <laughs> I, I remember I was hanging out with her one time, and I was having a bowl of broccoli and cheddar soup, and she like got angry at me, and she's like, ah, "Bill, what are you eating?" I was like, you know, broccoli and cheddar soup. And then she's like, Bill, do you have any idea how many cows were raped to bring you that soup? And I was just like, I don't know, anywhere between zero and one. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not a prerequisite to get into the dairy industry is to fuck cows. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, 
She went off on one tangent one time about she's like having eggs every day for breakfast is as bad as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Oh my god. And I was like, you're gonna have to like come up with some proof on that one. And she sent me to a website that was a vegan website. And the very first headline at the top of the page on this website said, Meat industry, the second Holocaust. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Oh my God. Yeah. Hey. She's intense. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jeez. You have lived a really interesting life for 31. Yeah. I yeah. Guess so. <laughs> so, do you travel around and stuff, or do you have a home base, or? Yeah, for a while, my home base was in New Jersey, then briefly Los Angeles and now here in Vegas. But like I've gone to Canada. I did just for laughs, like unofficially. I did just for laughs. Unofficially in in Montreal. Is that the one? Yeah, the one. It's actually funny how that happened because I had a friend who just got out of the Air Force and he came over to me. He's like, hey, my I have a friend up in Canada who's doing a comedy show. And he's like, he said, I could come up with a friend and do some guest spots. You want to go up and do it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he was like, I think there's some sort of festival going on up there. I was like, yeah, okay. God, like the biggest festival of all. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny because we were at like, we were at, um, we were at an open mic and I was saying, yeah, I think it's a part of some festival. A bunch of people are like, are you talking about just for laughs? I'm like, no, no, it's not just for laughs. I don't think it's just for laughs. It's like, yeah, I think it's wrapping up before you get out there. And we get out there and it's just for laughs. And we're like, oh, okay. Oh my God. How amazing was that? It was fun. Well, it was, no, it was so much fun to be a part of, but just for laughs too. is so big. It's like, so our show was in like the basement of the hostel and like down the street, this YouTube, uh, this one YouTuber, Jack Septic guy had like a whole fucking, like a huge, like sold out venue. And us down the street, we're in the basement of a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> there were like, there were but like, you were some, there. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was fun to do. It was so. It was then, do you stay and watch all the comics? And yeah, we walked around a bit. It's it's crazy because the entire festival is just like full of comedy. Like there are outdoor tents with just people set up. There was like this gazebo where there were like mimes, just like all, just like doing mime Miming. activities. <laughs> it was like. It was like different types of comedy from all over the world. And it was just really cool to like go out there and see it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I've only heard about it. Yeah. I would love to go sometime if it's still going to happen with COVID, oh, COVID and all that. Yeah. Are things opening up for you like to be able to work? Oh yeah. Vegas has been at 25% capacity since I've been here. Okay. So there have been shows and stuff like that. And it recently went up to 50% capacity. And now you only have to be three, three feet away from people. And then in like a week or so, it's going to be at 80%. So oh, wow. it's like, so Vegas is rushing to get back open. Yeah. And like my friends, like old shows are starting back up again. And people are like, and people are talking about introducing me to people from the Laugh Factory and Jimmy Kimmel's club. And like, so it's like, <laughs> yes. Awesome. Yeah that's amazing yeah honestly. that's yeah. cool do you have any plans on going to austin like a lot of LA everybody's comics moving are? and rogan is opening that place i had club, no yeah. intentions of going there until rogan said that and then now i'm thinking fuck maybe we yeah. have to isn't that like isn't that also like a isn't he like opening another comedy store out there because they were talking about like I think the comedy so. store is actually like going back and forth with him about it or something? Yeah, some kind of comedy club is what yeah. I've heard. I don't know, but everybody's going. Yeah. I mean, the thing with uh, with Vegas is that like I've talked to people who are in like Texas and stuff and they're like the big thing about that is it's mostly a hub for already established comedians um, where and the Vegas comedy scene is so like new and it's still, it's still so young mm-hmm. that <laughs> you're getting comedians who's like their second, third year and they have shows and stuff they're doing. So there's like more opportunity to grow rather than uh, opportunity to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we just like, had on Bill DeGilio who is on Polly Shore's Random Rants and podcast? He, or yeah, 
Yeah, and he moved to Vegas from LA in the pandemic. Polly Shore's out. Polly Shore's out here now. It's yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's on a comedy club and like his like one of his uh one of his like uh sidekicks, I guess, uh Mike Tran is out here. Yes. He <laughs> yeah, he does stuff with him all the time on his podcast and shit. Yeah. Oh awesome. I just started following Mike Tran because he's hilarious. Mike I don't know who <laughs> yeah. Mike Tran is yet. Yeah, I'll have funny. to learn about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh speaking of Vegas, this past weekend we were at Wise Guys in Salt Lake City to see Mark Normand. Um, and they're opening a club in Las Vegas. Wise Guys? Wise Guys oh, is, cool. yeah. Good place. Yeah. yeah, so you're going to have a new comedy club there soon. And they did our temperature going in. Mm -hmm. Was that it? And yeah. masks. And then once you sat down, it was just two space two. And I was like, fucking awesome. Yeah, it we're back, bad. baby. You know, kind of. Mm -hmm. It just it was so awesome to be at a show. And it wasn't until like halfway through that I was like, oh, my God, we are at a comedy show. <laughs> I like didn't. I, I thought it would be some monumental, like, oh my God, here we are. Yeah. Well, we, this was our first comedy show um, since the pandemic yeah. started. So we had last May of 2020, we had, Tickets we planned, we had a week vacation plan to go to Hollywood and hit all the yeah. uh, comedy clubs there. And then the pandemic hit and we couldn't go. Fuck the whole thing. Yeah. So it was awesome. I'm so glad you guys are getting back to it because we yeah. need it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are saying that like Los Angeles is kind of going to be dead for a while for comedy because people have realized it's like people have moved to Arizona, Texas, and then Las Vegas. Yes. And all three of those places, like the, the, the cost of living is so low mm -hmm. and it, most like become decentralized for the entertainment industry now that they're like we can move to these places where we don't have to pay as much and still yeah. try to do this shit. Yeah. So there are some hardcore comedians who are like we're staying in Los Los Angeles and riding it out. But a lot of the other places, since it's especially with Joe Rogan leaving and Polly Shore leaving and stuff, eh, it's become so decentralized now that people are starting to be like, well, we don't have to go to like New York and we don't have to go to Los Angeles. Like we can live in places where we're not like always on the brink of poverty now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's really. like halfway ish to both shores. Yeah. I mean, they're talking about like they won't have to travel as far as long. You know, <laughs> it is kind of awesome. And the taxes are way better in Austin, apparently. Oh, compared Vegas to Vegas is killing them. Yeah. California, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> So who do you follow? Like who are your favorite comedians? Because we're like into yeah, Kreischer are... and Segura and yeah. Mark Norman and yeah, who are your influences? <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, it's weird because I have comedians I liked, but I never wanted to be a stand-up comedian until like my friend was just like good to this open mic. So I never had like a stand-up comedian who made me go, I want to do stand-up. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. But I like I do like uh Tom Segura, yeah. uh nor mcdonald yeah. mm -hmm. i get told i look like tom segura <laughs> yeah all the time yeah. it's really weird <laughs> yeah. so nor mcdonald anyone else uh there's like fucking like who couldn't because again it's like then there are like comedic actors who i really like 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 mike rapapoe who i was really into for a while yeah. but then of course there's like uh of course there's how like you say it rapapoe I think it's Rappaport. Oh shit! I was saying Rappaport. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry. Anyways, sorry to interrupt. Go on. Yeah, but yeah. Of course, there's like Dave Chappelle. I was really into uh, Maria Bamford for a while. <laughs> oh, Maria Bamford. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing her years ago. On, it might have been Comedy Tonight on PBS. So many years ago, when I was a kid, that's the first time I saw Brian Regan as well. Was on Comedy Tonight, and I don't know if he still does, but his brother, uh, some Dennis Regan, I think, did comedy at the time, and they were both on the show. Huh. Yep, fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anywho, anywho, <laughs> I'd see number eleven on our notes is festivals. You put that in. What are you talking about? Well, I think you talked. I just wanted to know what festivals you've been to. So you've been to the one in Montreal, which is massive. Yeah, I've ever done like South by South. Have you ever done Skank Fest? I've I've not. So over the 
over the quarantine, someone said I should submit to Stankfest because I was doing a lot of Zoom shows and stuff like that. And one person was like, give me a video. I want to give it to uh, Big J Ogerson or whatever. But that never, that ne- I mean, I don't know if he forgot or if it just never went anywhere. So <laughs> that kind of never kind of faded away. Uh, but, oh, <laughs> it's every year. Yeah. I guess yeah. it's like, I could like submit or whatever, like and myself. Do you know they do a naked show? Oh, I they mean, do. yeah. It sounds like there are like underwear shows out here and stuff. So I assume it would, there'd be like a naked show somewhere. Yes. <laughs> and it's kind of on the DL, but once you get in, it's like super awesome, I guess. But you got to be naked. But I feel like you might be down for that or a little bit okay. You yeah, know, I'm fine with getting naked. I remember like one time someone tried to actually guess technically three times, but the only one that was really stick to is someone tried to blackmail me with nudes one time. And oh. I remember the first the first time it happened, I was so like scared, like, oh my god, this guy has pictures of me naked. It's like when I sat down, I really thought to myself, I was like, Do I really care? Yeah. And I was like, I, was like, like, I mean, go ahead, post them on go the for it, dude. If someone wants to see me naked, it's like, there you go. They're out there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's a good mentality. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what would you consider like your genre of comedy? Uh, I mean, I guess people keep on telling me that I'm dark and dry. So I guess it's like, I guess dark. It's like, I, it's. Okay. It's weird because I never see what I talk about as dark. And then people are like, you're dark. I'm like, I don't don't know. Is it dark though? So I guess like dark and dry. Okay. Yeah. Well, if it's your. I don't know about dry, but maybe shocking, like (laughs) surprising. Yeah. Like sounding most of us had never heard of. Yeah. No, I didn't know that was a thing. So. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just talk about my life. I talk about Which what's awesome. Reading. And if That's these, good. if this liberal media can't handle what's what's real, yeah, right. <laughs> No, I think I think that's what drew me to you was like he was he is totally talking about his real life. Yeah, like, it was just and that's real. Cool. Yeah, and honestly, we struggle to do that because we both have parents that are alive that yeah. like are judging us i'm sure my dad will probably turn this episode off yeah (laughs) Yeah, once we said if we ever said junk or penis his dad turned it off actually like my my mom low-key disowned me for like a for like a little while because (laughs) it was during the pandemic it's like i purposefully don't at like whenever it was in the area where they could go to i purposely didn't advertise because i don't want that headache but i got on this one show and they're like, okay, if you're going to do the show, you have to tell your glory hole story. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then she just messages me out of the blue. Hey, so I see you have a show. And I was like, oh, yeah, I have a show. And she's like, your father and I are coming. I'm like, how the oh! fuck are you going to come? It's like, it's all the way out in Los Angeles. So I was like, oh, yeah, no, it's a Zoom show. And I was like, well, I'm not changing it. So I go up, I do the glory hole story. My dad was surprisingly okay with it. Like, I thought he'd sw- freak out the most about it but then my mom just calls me she's like i can't support you uh your comedy anymore and then just doesn't talk to me for a month and i was like whatever oh (laughs) that's brutal i'm okay with like but not talking to you for a month yeah (laughs) maybe your dad had been to a glory (laughs) hole (laughs) who knows like he's following in my footsteps He's like, ah, oh, Red Barn. I remember Red Barn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Been there. The it's good old days. Yeah. <laughs> they still make you buy the tokens. It's like, <laughs> oh, uh, hopefully it wasn't your dad's shit through the glory hole. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry. Stop sorry. It. Anyways, I've been drinking. Sorry about that. <laughs> sure. All right. I want you to ask, what was the last oh. that other? Oh, is there anything that would surprise us from you? Are you holding anything back? Anything that would surprise? I mean, I talk about basically every. It's like I try to I try to test the waters with just about anything. Yeah. That I do and stuff. So I mean, I'll talk about like what I think on subjects and what's happened to me. And the only time I don't like 
talk about stuff or when I talk about it and I see people get depressed instead of instead of like laughing and I'm like okay this story might be a little too depressing I'll hold oh, that off and not talk about it okay so wow. I'm like super open with just with like everything and it's like wow. that's the so I test the waters and if basically it doesn't make people laugh I'm like whatever and I just like sit that to the side yeah wow. how did you get to be like that because we struggle to be like who we are how do you and you're way younger i'm 51 Chris be, is uh, open. 47 yeah, yeah like like be who you're supposed to be like yeah. i think most people hide stuff and yeah. i feel like you're living your authentic self i mean growing up like i mean growing up like i don't know my my dad was like kind of like I, I mean, he was, he wasn't, he wasn't bad. He, he, he acted like a kid who shouldn't, who was like now a parent. So whenever he'd get upset, he'd do stuff. Like he'd just yell at us for random things and he'd like hit us. Like oh. one time I tickled him, he just twisted my arm behind my back and like, well, like almost popped it out of its socket and stuff like that. But I mean, at the, I mean, at one point, if you just call someone stupid and like, if you just call someone stupid and like worthless and stuff like that enough, eventually you're just like, eh, so I am. So there's so, a, so, so it's almost like I lost my shame through just constantly being told like how little I was worth growing up. Wow. And see, yeah, I had a similar childhood, but like I, it affected me a totally, it may be like a controlling person trying to like control my surroundings. So you took it and like used it for yeah. your benefit. I mean, Trying that's awesome. Free, yeah. yeah. It freed you almost. Yeah, yeah. It made me more like, oh, I can't do X, Y, Z because yeah. I'm going to get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. For the most part, no, when I was with him, it's when I lived there, I was like, no, terribly afraid to do anything. Mm -hmm. But like once I left there, I was just that mentality of I'm a fuck up anyway. So might as well. It's wow. like, worst yeah. could it no, and I don't see you as a fuck up at all. I see you <laughs> as like somebody living your true self, which is admirable. Seriously, dude, you're doing you, which I love. That's amazing. Yeah. Cause I, I could almost like, I'm tearing up honestly, because <laughs> like not a lot of people can do that shit. No, yeah. no, ev like everybody's hiding stuff and I don't feel like you are, which is awesome. So <laughs> Do you? Yeah, it's very it cool, is. and we love it. So, yeah, not even those three guys I killed last night. Like, right. Just, yeah. I mean, that was the last question. Like, how many people have you killed? Yeah. But I mean, if you're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to divulge this on the Toasted Marshmallow Adventures podcast, do you? That you're a serial killer. Wait, not, hey. only did I, not only did I kill them, it was premeditated. Oh, oh nice. we meditated. Oh, well, that's you go. That's to our favorite kind. Yeah, <laughs> locked up for life for that. <laughs> so, thank well, you so yes, much. It's been awesome. What do you go by? Is it's not William? Is it is Bill it? or William? Billy? I go by. I don't really mind either way. People brought me up William, Bill, Billy. So I, cool. I'm fine with any of them. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for chatting I love with us. You. It's been great. Like you are we watched cool you. Human on kill tony we yeah. checked out your instagram and yeah. all the uh stuff on there well not all of it but a lot of it um so How yeah can thank people you. find you yeah i guess like i guess the easiest way would be just follow me on instagram i guess that would be what is it william np strange is, yeah i think that's it on i think that's it on instagram i yeah. guess would be the best way to follow me and if they and, want to see you live go to vegas <laughs> Yeah, I get up. I'm going to I guess I'm going to start getting up more at the L.A. Comedy Club. I do like their local shows out in Vegas, like at the Griffin Lounge that are have a bunch of super cool comedians that I'm going to start going to more. There's Rick's Rolling Barbecue in Vegas. There's uh, there's like so many great uh, so many great venues out here that I frequent that are awesome. Saturday night or Friday nights at midnight. I sometimes go up again at LA Comedy Club at the Stupid Town run by this comedian Gooch. Yeah, so ever out in Vegas, check out one of those shows. I'll probably be on one of them. Nice. Awesome. If we ever get to Vegas, we'll definitely check and that out. And if you out. ever get to Idaho, 
call us. Yeah, yeah. send us a message. We've yeah, got some, let us know. You could hook up with Nate Ford. He's a comedian here. Yeah, we've interviewed you on him here. a couple of times. Yeah. So, so I don't know. It'd be cool to see you. Cool to meet you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It, it's a, it was it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun doing your podcast. It's always nice to meet like other comedians or people just in the comedy community yeah. and stuff. Super down. Yeah, we're big fans, big yeah. stand-up fans. Yeah, so are. I mean, we travel to go see stand-up. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing the show. We're gonna get out of here. Um, so let's do our outro. Yeah, all right. All right. I'm signing okay. out. I'm signing off. I'm Chris Adams. Right. Wendy Mosier. Hashtag get toasted. Stay toasted. And thank you so much. Thank you. Train. You rock. I really thank you. Thanks. Yeah. I hope I meet you someday in person. <laughs> <laughs>